here. All right. Okay. Now, Professor. Yes. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Like I'll submit like the homework from the uh, from the blackboard because I like it when I see my grade on Blackboard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I cannot uh, submit through to the Blackboard. So oh, you cannot. You, uh, uh, you don't know how to do it, uh, how to upload uh, the homework on Blackboard? No. OK. Uh, I mean, we can talk about it later if you okay. want at the end of the lecture. Um, but uh, I mean, you can still you know, send me the, the homework. Uh, by OK, email. no problem. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So uh, let me share the screen. Okay. Where's the board? Good morning, Professor. Good morning. Okay, here we go. Okay, perfect. So, um, so this is a section, as I said, guys, this is section 1.7, right? So uh, it's about uh, combination and uh, composition of functions. So what we're gonna do today, we're gonna play with the functions. We're gonna do like some, you know, operations on functions like addition, uh, you know, uh, multiplication, we're gonna multiply, we're gonna divide, uh, subtract functions, right? So, um, so uh, the goal uh, today, so we're gonna do, so we're gonna um, do op algebraic, actually algebraic operations on, so when I say algebraic operations, I mean like addition, subtraction, you know, um, on functions. So on functions. Okay. So what I mean again is, so by algebraic operations, uh, so addition, you know, uh, subtraction. Um, so we're gonna subtract functions, uh, multiply functions, and of course, uh, division. All right. Um, so, uh, so first, uh, before the example, so I have to introduce some notation. So, uh, notation like uh, you know, uh, this is special. So, special notation for you know when you do addition or subtraction or multiplication or division on functions. So we have uh, the following notation. So, for example, for sum, so sum of let's say two functions. Let's say f of x and uh, g of x. All right, so we write this. Um, so the notation we use is the following. So we write, okay, so we write like f uh, plus g, all right, and then uh, parentheses and then of x. Okay, so when, so when you see f plus g of x, that, that this is actually that this means f of x plus g of x, right? So it's like you distribute the uh, uh, you know the, the the f and g. So it's f plus g of x. It's f of x plus g of x. And again, this is just a this is just a notation for when you have two functions f and g. So when you write f plus g of x, that means f of x plus g of x. So for example, so when you say uh, example. So let's say you have um, f of x. Let's say f of x is um, let's say negative two x square uh, minus five x plus three. All right, and then g of x is uh, let's say four x square uh, plus two x uh, minus four. Okay, so we have two different functions, f and uh, g, right? Now, if you wanna compute the sum, well, first, as I said, um, so first, uh, the, so, um, we denote the sum by f you know, plus g. So it's f plus g. So this is 
this is the sum of sum of f of x and uh, g of x. So that means that will be equal to like f of x plus g of x. Okay. So now, um, so uh, so f of x, of course. So this is f of x. Uh, so that will be negative two x squared minus five x, right? Plus three. Okay. And then we have a plus. So here's a plus. So here's a my plus. And then we have a g of x. So here's my g of x. So g of x would be, um, so, you know, four x squared plus two x minus four. So this is my F and this is my G, okay? Now, so it's the sum of F and G. Now, what you have to do guys is you have to try to, you know, to simplify, right? So now next, next step would be to simplify. So here's equal. So we're gonna try to simplify. So for example, um, you have, uh, you know, you have minus two X squared and you have plus four X squared, right? So that will be uh, plus positive two X squared, right? So that will be positive two X squared. Next, uh, you have like minus five X. So here's minus five X and here's plus two X, right? So we're gonna have minus uh, three X's. So that's minus three X, right? And then the constant, uh, so we have plus three minus four, so here you have the plus three and here you have the minus four, right? So that's three minus four. So that would be negative one. So minus one here. So that's minus one, okay? So that will be, of course, uh, so this is the final answer here. So that's your F plus G. So F plus G of X is equal to two X squared minus three X minus one, right? So it's important guys that you, you know, you simplify, try to simplify the whole expression, right? And of course, once you're done with the simplification, then that will be your final answer. So that will be F plus G. So uh, of course, this, so this is a sum. You can, of course, you can subtract, you know, you can uh, multiply, you can, um, uh, you can divide. Just be careful, for example, with the sub subtraction. So, um, so let's say this is example one. So, is another example, the subtraction. So now for subtraction, so subtract, subtraction. So the subtraction, of course, we're gonna denote the subtraction by, you know, uh, F minus G. So here's F minus G. So when I say F minus G of X, so that will be F of X minus G of X. Right, so this is f minus g is just a notation for f of x minus g of x. Right, so uh, an example, um, and as I said, you need to be careful a little bit with the subtraction. So because, um, so for example, let's say f of x is um, uh, three x minus one, and let's say g of x is uh, five x plus two. So when you do subtraction, so you you want to compute. Let's say you want to compute uh, f of f minus g of x. Okay, so that's of course f of x, as I said, minus g of x. So now f of x, of course, this is f of x. So f of x would be, you know, 3x minus 1. Here's f of x. All right, and then you have minus. So here's the minus, it's minus here. G of X. Now, um, uh, so for G of X, you need to put the G of X between parentheses, all right? Because otherwise you're gonna get the wrong sign. So it's, it's important guys that you put the G of X between parentheses. So here I'm gonna put parentheses and inside the parentheses, I'm gonna put the G of X. So here's my G of X, which is five X plus two. And uh, okay, so, um, so you see the parentheses are important because, you know, um, when you distribute the sign, I mean, it's gonna change the sign. Like if you have minus plus, that will be a minus, all right? So here, so it's important to put the parentheses, right? So when now I'm gonna distribute the sign, 
you know, three X minus one minus five X. And it's not uh, plus two, it's minus two, right? Uh, I mean, uh, negative times positive, that would be negative. So it's minus two here, right? Uh, because again, it's just because I distribute the sign. All right, so you see parentheses are important guys. Otherwise, instead of uh, minus two, we're gonna end up with a plus two, right? So just, just be careful, right? So now, of course, now I can, now the next step would be to simplify. So here, I'm gonna simplify. So, uh, so like uh, how many X's do we have? So here, you know, we have three X minus five X. So uh, we're gonna have minus two X. And then we have minus one. This is minus one here, minus two. So that'll be minus three. So that will be, of course, that's the final answer. So your F minus G, um, so F minus G, um, so F minus G of X is equal to minus two X minus three. I mean, so that's uh, actually, so that, that's the idea. Um, I don't forget to simplify guys, right? Uh, now, of course, so that's the subtraction. Uh, of course, next uh, we have, um, you know, multiplication, we can multiply functions. So uh, next we have multiplication. Just be careful the multiplication. So here, uh, the notation for multiplication is with a dot. So here we're gonna have F dot G of X. So that's F of X times G of X. Okay, so the dot means the multiplication, right? So, uh, so just, be careful. So because later we're gonna see the composition of uh, functions and the symbol for composition of functions would be like a, uh, like a small circle. So we're gonna have like dots and a small circle. So just be careful, dot means uh, multiplication, right? So it's just a product, so product. All right, so for example, here's a very basic example, example, so let's say you have uh, f of x, f of x is um, minus three x, right? And, and uh, g of x, let's say is two uh, x minus one, all right? Uh, if you have a question guys, just let me know, all right? So just uh, don't be shy, uh, please feel free to interrupt me if you have any question. So then F times G. Uh, so if you wanna do F times G, F times G, so F dot G, right, of X. So that means that's F of X times G of X. So it's just F of X would be, uh, would be uh, three minus three X times, all right? And then uh, again, my advice is to use, of course, a parentheses for G of, G of X. So here I'm gonna use parentheses for g of x, so here's uh, my g of x, that will be uh, 2x minus one, right? So now we distribute, so this is uh, minus three x times two x, that will be minus six x, and then a minus three x times negative one, so that will be positive three x, so plus three x, uh, sorry, plus, uh, Sorry, minus six x square, of course. I forgot the x, so minus three x times two x is minus six x square, and then plus uh, three x, All right? So, uh, so that will be a fine answer. There's no simplification here, uh, just uh, x squared and x. So, um, um, so the answer so F times G of X is equal to minus six X squared plus the X. Okay. So uh, that we are almost done. So that, that's for multiplication. Now, of course, uh, we have division. So let me just introduce the, the, the notation for division. So, uh, so here's division. Um, so we write like F, so F over G of X, so that's like F of X over 
g of x, right? So we, when you divide two functions f over g, you know, uh, you just write like f over g, the whole thing applied to x, right? So, um, so for example, here's an example. So let's say f of x, So let's say f of x is x, right? And g of x is x minus one. So when you write, so when you divide f by g, so we, are, we, are, we write f over g of x. So that means that's f of x over g of x. And so f of x would be x over g of x, which is of course x minus one. Um, yeah, so that's for the division. Um, is there any uh, question guys? Okay, uh, it's not, I don't think it's very uh, hard. Uh, now, um, next, um, uh, before the graphs that, yeah. So let's have probably an, an exercise here, um, exercise. This is one exercise. Exercise. All right. So let's say, uh, say, uh, let f of x say it's uh, x squared minus 4x uh, plus 6. And uh, g of x, let's say it's um, 6x, or let's say um, uh, 2x right, minus, uh, minus three, right? So, so what we have to do guys, so please, uh, please try to compute, so compute. So first uh, F plus G of X, uh, two F minus G of X, right? And um, three, let's say, f times g of x. Right, so, so I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes guys to compute these uh, functions. So first you have addition, then subtraction, and then uh, multiplication, right? Don't forget to simplify guys. It's really important that you simplify your answer. Can I ask you something about the division? Mm -hmm. That's the final answer? The yeah, that's the final answer, yes. Yeah, because you cannot really simplify. Yeah, that would be a final answer there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a comment in the chat. Ah, Emily, you're saying you don't see anything on the screen? Um, well, I guess I'm kind of late now, but uh, is it, uh, did, you, did you fix the problem? Is it better now? Does everybody see the screen? I guess it's probably except uh, Emily. No, yeah. I see you. Okay.
I'm here to answer your questions, guys. So please, uh, yeah, please don't forget to simplify. It's really important that you simplify your answer. Okay. Okay, guys, I guess, uh, I guess you are done. Well, I hope you're done with the, this exercise, the small exercise. Um, so um, for number one, uh, f plus g of x, number one, so f plus g of x. So, uh, so we said that will be f of x uh, plus g of x, right? And then f of x, uh, this is my f of x here. So it's x squared minus 4x plus 6, all right? And then we do have a plus. So here's my plus. So here's my plus. And uh, for addition, guys, you don't really need the parentheses, right? So it's, uh, so it's just uh, plus, and then my g, my g would be 2x minus 3. Okay, so. So then f plus uh, g of x would be, so first, uh, so let's simplify the answer. Uh, Ibrahim, you are saying number one, x square root of, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't think for number one, there's any, I don't think there's a square root in number one. Um, so first you have x square. So here's my x square. There is only x square. Then for the x's uh, we have, uh, there's a minus 4x here and a plus 2x here. So that will be uh, minus 2x. Plus 3. And then, yes, absolutely. Thank you. Isn't and then plus 3. Square. I said s square because I cannot put the square on. The oh, oh, okay. I thought it was square root. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, correct then. Thank you. Uh, for number 2, uh, f minus uh, g x. So by definition, it's f of x, and then there's a minus, there's a minus here, and then we have uh, g of x. So uh, that will be, that will be, so that will be equal to, so f of x, it's x squared minus 4x uh, plus 6, and then we do have minus, there's a minus, g of x, and as I said, guys, uh, subtraction, it's better to put parentheses. Uh, because you, you're going to have to uh, distribute the sign. So minus uh, g of x. So g is uh, g of x is just a 2x minus 3. So that will be uh, x squared minus 4x plus 6. So minus 2x and then minus minus that will be a plus 3, right? And so find the answer f minus g of x uh, would be um, so for x square, we have only one x square here, oops, here, right here. So that's one x square uh, for x's. So we do have uh, minus four x and then minus two x. So that will be minus six x. So here's my minus six x. And then finally, we're gonna have plus six, plus three. And so that will be uh, plus nine. So yes, so you're correct, Ibrahima. So that's the right answer, absolutely. So for number three, um, well, for number three, it's more the I guess there are more uh, computations in number three because it's a it's a multiplication, right? So uh, for number three, here's my number three. Uh, it's f times so the dot again means multiplication f of times of, uh, f times g. So that's f of x times g of x. So my f of x, it's x squared minus 4x uh, plus 6. 
right? And then I'm gonna need parentheses actually for both here. And then we have times, this is multiplication here, so multiplication here. And then I'm gonna need again parentheses for g of x. Here's g of x, which is actually two x minus three. All right. So now I have to uh, distribute. So we need to be careful with the distribution, guys. So here, uh, so first I'm gonna multiply this. Uh, I'm gonna start with this x squared, right? So x squared times two x, that will be two x cubed. And then there's minus three. So that will be minus three x squared, right? So we are done with the x squared. Now I'm going to multiply the minus 4x. So this minus 4x here by 2x. So that will be minus 8x. All right. And then minus 4x times the um, uh, negative 3. So that will be plus, plus 12x. Mm -hmm. And then finally, we have the plus 6. Here, there's a plus 6. So plus 6 times 2x, that will be plus 12x. So here's my plus another 12x. And then the plus six, uh, yes. Minus, minus eight gonna x squared. Yes, absolutely. Sorry, I, I, I again forgot the x squared. You're absolutely right. There's an x squared here. Yes, thank you. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you. And then last one here is six times minus the, that's minus uh, 18, so here's my minus 18, All right? And so, okay, so now um, once you are done with distribution, now we can try to simplify. So uh, x cubed, how many x cubed do we have? There's only this two x, two x cubed right here. So we have two x cubed, then the square x squares, uh, so we have um, minus 3x squared, minus 8x squared, so that will be minus 11, uh, minus 11x squared. So here you have minus 11x squared, right? Um, now for the x's, so we have plus 12x, plus 12x. This is plus 12x here, plus 12x here. So that will be plus 24x. So plus 24x. And finally, there's only the constant minus or negative 18. So that's minus 18, right? Um, so as you can see, guys, I mean, you can, you, you can, I mean, you can easily ma make mistakes here. So just be careful when you distribute, uh, right? So that will be, of course, that's the final answer. Uh, so that will be, uh, so that's f times g of x. So it's two x cubed, uh, two x cubed minus uh, 11 x squared, then plus 24 x and minus 18, All right? Um, so I guess Ibrahima, your answer was, uh, or I think it was wrong, right? You said that eight x cubed minus 18 x squared. But uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, we can easily make mistakes. I mean, I myself, I did a mistake here, right? I forgot the square. So yeah, just be careful. Anyway, so that's the final answer. Um, is there any question, guys? Nope. Okay, so now, um, so we're gonna do uh, operations, but now we're gonna use graphs. Okay, so now I'm gonna use graphs. So, um, so now, we're gonna use using graphs. So I'm gonna have like graph of two functions like f and g, right? And then we have to find like values of like f plus g or f minus g, etc. cetera. So, um, so let, let's do an example. Uh, here's an example, an example. So I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna graph two functions. So let's say, So let me, I need to put numbers here. Um, so I get it one, two. Um, okay, negative, um, probably I'm gonna, I'm gonna make, take a bigger, 
units, I guess. So here, let's say this is negative one, negative two, negative three, here's positive one, positive two, here's positive one, positive two, and here's negative one and negative two. All right, so first function, the function f. Uh, so here's my f of x uh, here. And then let's say I have a point right here. All right, so so let's say this is my f of x. All right, so that's my f. Now my g. So my g of x would be the following. So here's my g of x. So this is my uh, g of x, right? Now, uh, so what we're gonna do guys, uh, we're gonna try to find, so let's say you wanna find Um, F plus G of, uh, let's say negative three, right? F minus G of uh, zero. Right? Uh, then let's say you wanna find F times G of positive one and then um, let's say you want to find F over G of, uh, let's say, uh, two. And the last one, uh, let's say it's F over G of uh, zero, All right? So for number one, uh, so we have F plus G of a negative three, right? So that means, so uh, we said by notation, so this is f of, so this is supposed to be like f of x plus g of x, right? So for number one, so we have like, it's supposed to be f of x plus g of x, but my x guys, it's negative three, right? Here's my x. So it's actually f of negative three, right? Because my x is supposed to be negative three. That's my input, right? It's supposed to be negative three. So that's f of negative three, plus, right, because I have a plus here. So that would be a plus and then G of X, but my X again, my input X is negative three. So that's G of negative three, right? So the first F plus G of negative three, that, that means that's uh, actually F of negative three plus G of negative three. Now, now I need to find using the graph, of course, I need to find F of, of uh, negative three and uh, G of negative three. So what will be F of negative three? Again, F is the, the red, F is supposed to be the red graph, right? So uh, here is negative three. That's my X is an input, X is negative three, right? So F of negative three. So here you go up here. So you're gonna have this F, that's the, the image of negative three and it corresponds to, you know, a positive one. Yes, uh, absolutely, Kyra, yes, it's positive one. So F of negative three, that's actually positive one. So here, I'm gonna write positive one. And then we have a plus, right? So here's my plus. And then I need to find G of negative three now. So it's G of negative three. So again, here's my negative three. I'm gonna go down here because, you know, my the green graph is the graph of G. So, and then this point here would be negative one, right? So G of negative three is actually negative one. Yes, absolutely, Kyrie is negative one. So that's one plus, and then we're gonna have a negative one here. So this is my F and this is the G of negative three. So it's negative one. So final answer would be, you know, uh, uh, so one plus negative one. So final answer would be zero. So here the answer is zero. 
right? So you see, guys, how it works? Uh, well, for example, next, uh, let's see uh, for the next. So for next, we have f minus g of zero. So it's supposed to be, you know, f of zero. That's my f of x, like my f of x, but my x here is zero. So that's f of zero. And then I have subtraction. So here's my f minus, and then uh, g of zero. Now, f of zero, here's, uh, here's zero, right? f of zero, the f is the red graph, all right? So that's f of zero would be one, right? So that's positive one. And then we have minus, so here's my minus, and then g of zero. Well, um, here's again zero, uh, but g is the, the green graph, right? So it's the same point, this is the origin, right? So g of zero would be just zero because it's the origin. So it's minus zero. One minus zero, so the answer is positive one. Right? Is there any question, guys, how I got these uh, values? I mean, the, the zero and one? Nope, okay. So for next, f times g of one. So by definition, that's like f times g of x. So that'll be like f of x times g of x, but my x is positive one. So it's like f of one times g of one. F, like, again, it's like f of x times g of x, but my input x is positive one. Now I need to find f of one. So f of one, here's one, right? Here's one on the x axis. So, and the corresponding uh, uh, image by f would be this point, which is actually negative one. So f of one is negative one. So f of one is negative one, right? Use parentheses, guys, with the, with the negative numbers. And then times. So here, multiplication, we have a product here, times, right? And then g of one, g of one would be, you know, again, here's one, and you go down by two, you get your g of one. So that would be negative two. So g of one is negative two. So that's negative one times negative two, two. That would be positive two. So the answer is positive two. Um, now uh, for uh, division, f of, uh, over g of, uh, of two. So by definition, so my x is two, right? So it's like f of x over g of x. So it's f of x, but my x input x is two. So that's f of two over g of two. So I need to find first f of two. So let's find f of two. Here's, here's two, right? And f of two, it's the same point. So it's the f of two would be just zero. So that's zero over, now g of two. So here, here's two, and I have to go down by one. So it's actually negative one. So g of two is negative one. So here's my negative one. And of course, thank you, Carly. Yes, it's negative one. And then we have zero over negative one. So you have to reduce the, 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 the uh, simplify your answer here because zero over any non-zero number is zero. So this is equal to zero, right? Zero over non-zero number is always zero. Last one, f over g of zero. So it's like f of zero over g of zero f of zero, so here's zero, f of zero said this is positive one, and g of zero, it's the origin, right? So it's just zero, so g of zero is zero, right? Now, when you divide by zero, actually we are not, you know, remember guys, we are not allowed to divide by zero. So one over zero, so that'll be undefined, right? Because we are not, we are not allowed to divide by zero. So here, the answer, your answer should be undefined because we are not allowed to divide by zero. So if you have a zero on the top, that will be zero. If you have a zero on the bottom, that will be undefined, All right? Any question, guys? So that's how we use the graphs when you, you know, when, when you do like algebraic operations on functions, right? Um, okay, so if this, there's no question, guys, so let me give you a similar problem or exercise. So uh, I'm going to move to the next page. 
Okay, so here's an exercise. And here's my uh, two functions. So negative one, two, zero, positive one, positive two, positive one, positive two, negative one, and negative two. So let's say my f of x So this is my f of x. Right? Now my g of x So that's my uh, g of x. The green graph is my g of x. Right. So what you have to do, guys, is you need to find or you need to compute. So find. All right. So F plus uh, G of negative two. And then G minus F of uh, zero. Then f times g of negative one, right? Uh, then f, or let's say g over f of uh, zero. And then last one, f over g of, let's say, uh, negative two. Right? Okay, guys, I have a couple of minutes uh, to find these values. And uh, don't forget, guys, if you have this uh, empty dot, so the empty dot means that the point is excluded from the graph, right? Or, I mean, excluded means it's undefined, right? And uh, also, guys, I mean uh, the order of the the order of the functions is really important. So when you see like uh, g minus f, that's g first, and then and then minus f.
Okay, guys, um, I don't know if you are done. Yeah, but I mean, if you are done, then uh, probably I can, I uh, can uh, um, uh, solve the, the exercise here. So uh, for number one, uh, any guess for number one, F plus uh, G of negative two. So what would be the answer for number one, for F plus G of negative two? Okay, well, so for number one, you have, uh, you know, you have F of negative two, and so, so we have, so we have F of negative two, right? And then there's a plus, so here's my plus, then uh, G of negative two. So F of negative two, here is my negative two. Right, so F, that's the red graph. So we have to go up here. So that will be the image of negative two and that corresponds to positive one. So F of negative two is, uh, uh, is positive one plus. Now G of negative two, uh, well, um, you see here, this is my negative two and it's gonna G of negative two is the same point, all right? It's just a zero. So here F plus, uh, sorry, one plus zero, should be zero here. So one plus zero, so one plus zero. And so the answer would be one. So any, uh, any question guys, how I got the positive one? Nope, okay. So for the next uh, G minus F of zero, as I said, the order is important. So first you start with G, right? We start with G. Uh, you, our x, our input is zero, so g of zero, minus, because we have subtraction, right, f of zero, so f of zero, here's f of zero, uh, g of zero, uh, here is x equal to zero, g of zero would be the same point, the origin, and that will be zero, the origin is just zero, so here's zero, and then we have minus, right, here's minus, minus, then f of zero, f of zero would be, of course, uh, this point here, which is positive one, so zero minus one. And so the answer, the answer, of course, would be uh, zero minus one, the answer would be negative one. So the answer is negative one. Yes, yes, Gary, yeah, absolutely, zero minus one, so the answer would be negative one. Uh, now next for the product f times g of negative one. So it's f of my input x, which is negative one times, because we have multiplication here, it's product times g of my x is negative one. So g of negative one. Now f of negative one. Uh, so here's my x, right? Equal to negative one, f of negative one well, F is the red graph. So if you go up here, well, you, uh, you, you, you intersect this point, but this is excluded, right? So it's actually undefined. So the, the F of negative one is, is undefined. So F of negative one here, this is undefined, right? Because, because of this empty circle, empty dot here, right? So it's undefined. So if f of negative one is undefined, the whole product is undefined. So the whole thing is actually undefined. So the, your answer here should be undefined. So if one of the, one of the terms is undefined, then the whole thing is gonna be undefined, right? Now, uh, next, unless there's a, there's a question. Okay, so uh, for next, uh, g over f, of zero. So here in the top, we have G, right? Uh, it's not F. So in the top, we're gonna have G. So we're gonna have like G of X, my X input is zero over and in the bottom, in the denominator, we're gonna have F. So that's F of uh, X, which is zero. 
uh, g of zero, yes, Caroline, the answer is going to be zero. So g of zero is going to be zero. Uh, and f of zero is a positive one, right? So, and then zero over one, as we said, if they have zero in the top, so that will be zero. Final answer is zero. Uh, okay. Uh, last one. Is there any, any guess for our last one? f over g of negative two. So it's f of negative two. f is in the top, g is in the bottom. So g of my x, which is negative two. Now f of negative two. So here's my negative two, right? So my f of negative two would be positive one. Uh, so that's positive one. And g of negative two, g of negative two guys. Uh, so be careful. Uh, here's my negative two, right? So it's the same point. So G of negative two would be zero. So it's one over zero. And yes, uh, yeah, just be, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's not the negative one coyote, yes. So it's uh, actually one over zero, which is of course zero in the bottom, then it's undefined. Right. So the answer is undefined actually. Um, any question, guys? Okay, nope, okay. So uh, next, uh, so this is how we do algebraic operations on functions. So next, what we're gonna do, uh, well, our next question actually, we're gonna try to answer today is, uh, what will be the domain of, you know, of the f plus g, f minus g, et cetera. So the uh, next, uh, uh, so question, an important question actually. So question is, so uh, we're gonna try to answer this question today. Um, so um, the question is, what will be the domain? What's the domain of, of F plus G, F minus G, F times G, and f over g, right? I mean, you know, you know how to we know how to find domain of a function f, right? And we know how to define find the fun, the domain of the function g, right? Now the question is, so what will be the given the domain of f and the domain of g, then what will be the domain of f plus g, right? Or etc. Or f minus g, or right? right? So. Um, well, so before answering this question, so uh, let me introduce some notation here. Uh, we're gonna use some notation. So uh, notation here. Um, so I'm gonna denote like the domain of uh, domain of f by like d uh, df. So the like uh, df like d and then uh, subscript f. This is the domain of f of x, right? And um, uh, d subscript g, that will be the domain. Remember guys, what I mean by domain. Domain is a set of the inputs x that you can input in the function f, right? So that's the, the domain. So the domain of g of x, right? Um, so then we say the common, common domain uh, for two functions or the intersection domain. So the common, the common domain for uh, two functions f of x and uh, uh, G of X. So when I say a common domain, uh, of course, I'm going to explain all the examples later what I mean by com common domain, but a common domain means the intersection domain. So the, here, this is so common. What I mean by common here is the intersection. It's like the intersection of the two domain. So that will be the common domain. So the common domain for two functions, uh, F and X is actually denoted by is denoted by, so df, 
And then we have like uh, reverse uh, capital U, domain of G. So this symbol here means intersection. So this is, this means intersection or common. Right? So remember guys, if you have, you know, if you have the capital U, you know, that, that means the union. But if you have reverse capital U, that would mean, actually that's uh, the intersection or the common, uh, common domain. Um, so let's do a couple of examples. Um, examples. So how do we find the com common domain of uh, for two functions? So let's say, so here's examples. Examples. So. Um, Let's say f of x is square root of x plus three, right? And g of x is square root of one minus x, right? And so the, the question is to find the common domain. Find the common domain, which is df intersected with the dg, right? The domain of f intersected with the domain of g, all right? So, uh, so to find this common domain, there are, there are basically, I would say, three steps. So in the first step, so step one, so in the step one, you need to find uh, domain of f. So in the step one, find, domain of F. Okay, in the step two, you need to find domain of G. Then in the last step, uh, you need to find uh, the intersection. So DF intersected with DG, the intersection domain or the common domain, right? So let's try to follow these steps. Uh, for, so first step one, we said, we need to find the domain of f of x. So step one. So here's my f of x, which is square root of x plus d, right? So remember guys, so how do we find domain of a functions, right? Uh, remember there are two main rules, right? We are not allowed to divide by zero. So you, you, um, uh, you cannot divide by zero. And the second rule is you cannot have negative numbers under the square root. So here, f of x square root of x plus three. Uh, so first question, is there, is there any division here? Can we divide by zero here? Is there a division? Well, of course here, there's no division, right? So that's good news. Now, next question is, is there a square root? Right, so first, is there a division? Nope. Okay, now is there a square root? Right. And of course we do have a square root here. So it's a square root of X plus C. So I need to make sure that the term under the square root is, uh, is not negative because we are not allowed to have negative numbers under the square root. So x plus three. So this expression here and the square root, the x plus three. So the x plus three must be, it cannot be negative. So it must be positive or zero. Must be positive. or zero, right? So here it must be positive or zero means it's larger or equal to zero. So my X plus T is larger or equal to zero. Right, so of course now we solve for X. So you subtract, you know, subtract T both sides. So it's X larger or equal to negative T. Right, so then my domain, domain of F, 
So here's zero, here's the negative phi. So domain of F would be any number larger or equal to negative phi, right? So the answer for domain of F, so the domain of F would be negative phi included positive infinity, right? So that's the answer for the step one for the domain of F. Is there any question about the domain of F? All right, so for now, step number two, we need to find now the domain of G, right? Step number two. Uh, well, G of X. So G of X is square root of one minus X, right? So G of X, G of X is square root of one minus X. So here, the same, so same observation applies here. I mean, here there's no division, right? So that's, that's good. Now, the second uh, thing is uh, we actually, uh, we need to check is, is there any uh, square root? Yes, we do have, of course, a square root and under the square root, the whole expression under the square root must be positive or zero, it cannot be negative. So this whole thing here under the square root must be positive or zero. So the one minus X, must be positive or zero. Okay. So, so that's the equation we need to solve. One minus x larger or equal to zero. Larger or equal to zero, right? So we need to solve for x, of course. Uh, you can subtract one. So then you have like minus x larger than negative one, larger or equal to negative one. All right, but then there's minus, it's not exactly X, right? We have minus X, so we need to get rid of the minus. So I'm gonna, to get rid of the minus, I'm gonna, let's say, you know, divide by negative one, both sides. So negative, of course, negative would be positive. So here's positive, right? So when you divide by negative one, of course, so you change. So be careful because it's a negative number, then you have to change the direction of our inequality, so that's, so that will be X now less or equal to positive one, right? So here, so it's because we divided by a negative number. All right, so now it's not larger or equal now it's less or equal. So X is, so this is less or equal, of course. So this is less or equal. So X is less or equal to one. So here's my X. Uh, so let's say this is my number line. Here's one. My X must be less than one or equal to one. So less or equal to one. So here is less or equal to one. And of course it can be equal to one. So I'm gonna include one, right? So then the domain of uh, domain of uh, G, the domain of G would be negative infinity. You always start from the left guys, right? Okay, so we always start from the left. Uh, so it goes from negative infinity to positive one and positive one of course is included. Right. So that would be the domain of G. So, so we are done with the step two. That's the answer for the step two now. We are almost done. Now we can move to the step three. So in the step three, we have to find the intersection domain or the common domain, right? Find the common domain, right? The DF intersected. So this is, again, this reverse capital U means intersection. So uh, DF, domain of F intersected with the domain of G, right? So, so how do you find this common domain? Well, so let me just explain here with the number line. So here's my first number line. Uh, so we said domain of F though before the number line. So let me just write for you. So we said in the step one, step one, we said the domain of F is positive phi, uh, positive infinity. And in the step two, uh, we said domain of G is negative infinity, positive one, right? So now 
Oops. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to find the common, common domain, intersection domain. So here's my number lines. Um, so let's say here is one. This is the, I'm going to need one and three, right? Um, so here, so this is one, this is three. So domain of F, we said it's the positive infinity. So here, this is domain of F, right? That's the domain of F. It's from T to positive infinity. Now, now what's the domain of, uh, what's the domain of G, right? So, uh, here, we're gonna have domain of G, which is negative infinity, positive one. So this is the domain of G, right? Right, that's the domain of G. It's negative one, positive infinity, right? Now, we're gonna, we're gonna find the intersection. So what will be the common domain to DF and DG, right? So we need to find the intervals that they are like at the same time, green and red, right? So here's, Here's my df, let me put here my df. This is domain of f, right? And of course the green interval, that'll be the domain of g, right? Is there an intersection between the green interval and the red interval? Is there anything common between these two dom domains, the, the red and the green domain? There's nothing in common, right? Okay. No intersection here, right? There's nothing in common here, nothing. Um, professor, yes. sorry to interrupt you. Um, yeah. I think the first one, first step, the domain of F, I think is a negative three plus infinity, right? Oh, right. it's negative three, sorry. Yes, you're right, thank you. I wrote positive three, yeah, thank you. No problem. Thank you. So it's negative three here. I wrote uh, positive three, thank you. It's, it's even better, uh, this is. So here, this is positive three, thank you. Uh, sorry, negative three. So, okay, so yes. So then I'm gonna need, sorry here guys, it's my mistake. So it should be negative three and positive one. So here's my number line. Uh, so we have negative three and here's positive one, right? So let's do, First, the domain of F. So it's from negative three to positive infinity. So that'll be the domain of F, right? And then the domain of G is the green, um, is from negative infinity to positive one. So from negative infinity to positive one. So here's my positive one. And so this, that's the, the domain of G, right? So that's the green domain. Okay, so, uh, so what will be the intersection in this case? What will be the, the common uh, domain to the to the domain of f and domain of g, uh, so the the, the you know the, the the interval which is at the same time green and red would be you know the one from so you see this one here from negative three to positive one. This is so this interval here, it's common to the, to, to the domain of G and the do domain of F, right? It's uh, red and green at the same time. So that will be the common domain or the intersection domain, the common domain, right? That's green and red at the same time. So that's what I mean by common domain, right? So the domain which is at the same time belongs to the domain of F and also to the domain of G. So the intersection in this case would be, so the so final answer, so domain of F intersected or common domain with, of uh, domain of F with the domain of G would be, so from negative three, right? Negative three is included, right? Because yeah, it's included, right? And, and then we have a bracket at positive one, so uh, but positive one is also included, right? So that will be the common domain to the functions F and the uh, uh, functions F and G, right? So is there any question how I got this common domain? 
So you see guys, all you have to do, I mean, you can draw your number line, right? And uh, you can graph or draw your domain of F domain and, uh, and then domain of G. And then you have to find like the intersection, right? You have to find the intervals which belong you know, at the same time to the domain of F and the domain of G, right? So like here in this case, the, the, the interval would be negative to the positive one because it's at the same time, it belongs to the domain of F, it's in the red and it's also in green, which means that it's in the domain of, uh, of, uh, of G too, right? So that would be my common domain. Um, is there any question guys about this interval negative P1? All right, no questions. So um, then, okay, so uh, let me give you an exercise. Um, so here's an exercise, so next exercise. I'm gonna give you a couple of functions and we're gonna need uh, find, to find the domain of uh, the common domain, right? So exercise, exercise. So the question is, of course, find domain of F intersected with the domain of G, right? So, um, so number one, let's say F of X is square root of two minus X and G of X is square root of four minus X or X minus four, let's say X, uh, X, uh, or let's say x plus four. So here's x plus four, All right? Uh, number two. So f of x is one over x squared minus one, and uh, g of x is, uh, let's say, uh, one over, um, or let's say, um, let's say it's just square root of, um, let's just make things easy here. So let's say it's X plus, uh, plus two. All right. So, um, so yes, guys, so please try to find the domain of uh, the intersection domain. All right, the common domain to the F and uh, G. And again, um, so we need to follow. So there are basically three steps. So first we said, you know, you have to uh, find domain of F, then find the domain of, uh, you know, here find domain of F, then find the domain of G, and then you can find the, the intersection domain. So. Um, so please follow the same steps uh, and uh, for these functions here, f and g. Uh, what will be the answer if phi would be positive? Uh, yes, so if it's, yeah, if it was a positive phi, then actually there will be no intersection. Uh, so the, the, the answer would be just uh, uh, the empty set. So there is no intersection. And so the, the answer would be just the, the empty set. Mm -hmm. So we may ask guys why we are doing this uh, common domain. Uh, that's because we're gonna see in a couple of minutes, uh, it's a theorem uh, which says that like if you have two functions F and G, then the domain of F plus G, domain of F minus G, domain of F times G would be actually the, the common domain, the intersection domain, right? And the domain of F over G uh, would be also the common domain, but then you have to exclude the values where G is zero, okay? So that's why we are doing this common domain because uh, it's gonna be the domain of F plus G, F minus G, et cetera. Right, so we're gonna see this like in a couple of minutes, but first let's uh, do this exercise. Uh, don't forget guys for the domain, you have to make sure. So again, there are two rules, no negative numbers and the square root. So it must be positive or zero wherever you have under, under the square root. And if you have a division, then you have to make sure that you, uh, you don't divide by zero. So you have to exclude 
all the values of x where the, the, the bottom is zero, right? <clears throat> So we will meet tomorrow, uh, guys, at the usual time, right? So tomorrow I will see you uh, at 10 a.m. as usual. Right? And uh, please don't for forget your homework number three, right? It's uh, due uh, tomorrow. Um, again, just to remind you guys, the first test is going to be on October 20, uh, October 21st, right? So it's like in uh, three weeks. And uh, I guess I will post the homework number four on, uh, on uh, Blackboard, uh, I guess on uh, Thursday, okay, Thursday morning. All right, is there any question about number one? Any guess? Me. 
Mm -hmm. Yes. The the common domain will be uh, minus four. Yes. To two. Yes, absolutely. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Very good. And are you done with number two? No, I'm starting it. Okay. No problem. All right, guys, I guess uh, we don't have much time. So uh, probably let me just start with the number one, right? So, um, you know, so for number one, this, number one is kind of uh, almost the same as the, the example we had, the previous example, right? So number one, uh, uh, so here's, here's F, uh, number one. Uh, so step one, we said we have three steps. So step one. Step two, right? And here's my step three, All right? So step one, uh, you need to find domain of f of x. It's square root of two minus x, right? And uh, so we only have, um, we don't have division. We only have a, a square root and the expression and the square root must be positive or zero. So the two minus x must be positive or zero. All right, so then, uh, yes. All right, so then you can uh, for, uh, solve for x. Uh, so then, um, well, probably I should erase this step two here, step three. Okay, so I was saying, so two minus x, we can solve for x. So we subtract two, that's minus x, larger than negative two. And then you divide by, uh, you need to divide by negative one because uh, you need to get rid of the negative. So you divide by negative one. And then, uh, so we're gonna end up with x. Now it's gonna be less or equal to uh, positive two, right? Because uh, again, because you divide or when you multiply by a negative number, then you have to change the direction of your inequality, right? So. Uh, so that's x larger, uh, sorry, x less or equal to positive two, right? So then domain of f, so domain of f here on your number line, so it's from negative infinity to positive two include, right? Because x can be equal to two. Uh, so that's for f of x. Uh, now for a step, uh, this is step two. Now for g of x, step two. So for g of x, we have uh, square root of x plus four. Again, there's no division. Uh, we only have a square root. So we need to make sure that the square root is, uh, the, the, the expression under the square root is positive or zero. So the x plus four must be positive or zero. So then uh, you solve for x, subtract four. So x is larger or equal to negative four. So then domain of G would be any number larger or equal to negative four. So it should be negative four to positive infinity, All right? So then now I can find in the step three, I can find my intersection domain. Uh, so here's my step three intersection uh, domain. So df intersected with dg. So we're gonna have, um, so df 
domain of F is negative infinity, positive two. DG is negative four, positive infinity. All right, so let's, let's uh, draw the number line. So let's draw a number line here. Again, guys, the number line is not your final answer. Uh, so your final answer should be an in interval notation, right? So the number line is just to, you know, may uh, explain to you the, the answer. So uh, we're gonna need negative two, positive two, uh, negative infinity, positive two. So we're gonna need positive two and we're gonna need negative four. So domain of F and here is of course negative infinity and this is positive infinity. So domain of F goes from negative infinity to positive two. So I'm gonna use the red for domain of F, positive two included. So that's the domain of F. Now domain of G goes from uh, negative four, domain of G goes from negative four to positive infinity. And here's my uh, negative four of course included. And so that will be my DG. So the intersection, so the common domain uh, to both F and G, there will be this interval here. It's uh, red and green at the same time. So that will be my intersection, right? Or the common domain intersection. So find answer should be, so find answer domain of F intersected with the domain of G uh, should be negative four to positive two. Both of course are included, right? So this is a final, this is your fine answer. Should be your final answer, All right? Any question about this? Negative four, positive two? Nope, okay. Um, okay, so the, the example number two, where is my example number two? Uh, we have a kind of different function here for f. Uh, so it's one over x squared minus one. Um, so for number two, so for number two, uh, f of x is one over x squared minus one and g of x, uh, where is it g? Uh, yes, it's square root of x plus two, square root of x plus two. So square root of x plus two, right? Okay, so as usual, um, so step one, domain of f, um, so for domain of f, uh, f here, we don't have a square root, right? There's no square root here. However, of course, we, we do have a division. And if you have a division, you need to make sure that, you know, the bottom, the denominator is not zero. Um, so the, the bottom here is, of course, is x squared minus one. So I need to make sure that this x squared minus one is not zero. So I need to exclude any value for x for which this bottom here is be zero, okay? So I need to solve, I need to solve x squared minus one equals to zero, right? It's not larger or equal to zero, it's equal because I don't care if it's positive, right? All I care about is when it's, uh, when it's equal to zero. I don't care if it's positive or negative, okay? Again, because it's division, and you just have to avoid the division by zero, right? So we have to solve x squared minus one equal to zero because, because we have a division. So if you have a division that will be equal, if you have a square root that will be larger or equal to zero. So x squared minus one is equal to zero. We can just uh, you know, add plus one, that'll be x squared equal to positive one. Uh, it's not exactly x, it's x squared. So we need to take the square root both sides, here's my square root, here's my square root. And of course, because it's an even power, then you're gonna need the plus or minus, right? Because it's even, uh, square is even power. So then you're gonna have X equal to plus or minus one, okay? So what we are saying is if X is positive or negative one, then the bottom denominator is gonna be zero. So we need to exclude we need to exclude positive or negative one, right? For the domain of F. So domain of F would be like any number except positive and negative one, right? So it will be like negative infinity to a negative one, excluded union of negative one, positive one, both negative one and positive one are excluded. And then union positive one, 
uh, positive infinity. So you only have to ex exclude negative one and positive one, right? So don't forget here, there's uh, this negative one, positive one, because, you know, because if you can take a number between negative one and positive one, for example, zero or half or negative half, then you need to uh, include uh, such number, right? So that's why we have this negative one, positive one in the between, right? That's, so we, we do have three different intervals here, not just two, all right? Um, okay, so that's for domain of F, we just exclude positive and negative one. Now domain of G, so that's step number two. So in the step number two, uh, we have to find domain of G. Uh, domain of G, G is uh, square root of X plus two. So as I said, if you have a square root, then that will be larger or equal to zero, right? So we're gonna have like, we're gonna have, we're gonna need to solve X plus two larger or equal to zero so because we need the X plus two to be positive or zero. So if you solve for X, of course, so your X must be larger or equal to negative two, right? So then domain of G would be any number larger than negative two, negative two is included. So negative two positive infinity, right? Okay, so we are almost done. So the, uh, now we have domain of G, uh, domain of F. So now I can move to the last step, so step three. So let me write it, write it down for you again. So the domain of F, we said it's any real number except the negative one and positive one. And domain of G, it's negative two positive infinity. Okay, so let me draw the both domains on the same number line. So I'm gonna need a negative, negative two. Here's my negative two, I'm gonna need negative one and I'm gonna need positive one. Here's my negative infinity, positive infinity. Now, so first for domain of F, it's any number, your number on the number line except negative one and positive one. So it's any number except the negative one and positive one. So we need to exclude both the negative and positive one, right? So that's why I'm using parentheses here. So to say that negative and positive one are excluded, right? Now uh, let's draw the domain of uh, G. It's any number larger or equal to negative two. So here I'm gonna need to include negative two and it goes from negative two, you know, to positive infinity, all right? So what will be the common domain now to F and G? So you see guys here, uh, so what will be the domain which is, or the interval, which is at the same time green and red, right? So again, the, the red is the domain of F, the F, and the green domain is the domain of G. So you see this whole interval here. So from negative two to positive infinity, uh, it's common to the, I mean, it's red and green at the same time. So it's common to the F and G, except of course, the negative one and the positive one, right? Because negative one and positive one, they do, do not belong to the domain of F, okay? So they are not common to F and G because they don't belong to the domain of F. So the, the answer should be, you know, should be, uh, negative two, so here's fine answer. So it should be so the domain of F intersected with the domain of G. So we start at negative two, all right? It's included, right? Because uh, it belongs to the domain of F and also the domain of G. Now we go from negative two to negative one because we have to exclude negative one. Negative one is not in the domain of F. So if it's not in the domain of F, it's, so it means it's not common to F and G, right? If it's not in the domain of F. So it's not the common value, right? To the both domains. So we have to exclude negative one. And then we start again at negative one excluded to positive one, which is also excluded from the domain of F. So it's not common to F and G. And then union, of course, again, positive one to positive infinity. And so that would be the, 
the, the, the, the intersection or the common domain to the F and G. All right? Is there any question, guys, about how I got this intersection or common domain? I mean, you can use the number line, guys. I mean, you can draw your domain of F, domain of G, and, and then you can see what will be the intersection between the two domains, right? So you can always use the number line. If you're not sure about the answer, I think it's a good idea to use actually a number line, right? Anyway, so if there's no question, guys, uh, let me just say uh, why we are doing this. And uh, I guess I'm gonna continue with this tomorrow, but the main reason is uh, we are doing this common domain it's because of the following theorem, and I'm going to explain tomorrow. So the theorem. Let me just state. Let me just uh, state the theorem. So the theorem says the following. So the theorem. So if you have uh, uh, two functions, all right, then f and g, then uh, the domain of f plus g of x and f minus g of x and f times g of x is the, the common domain as df intersected with the dg. Right? And for uh, for D, uh, for F over G, when you divide the domain uh, is an intersection, but then you need to exclude uh, the domain as uh, DF intersected with DG with uh, the values Uh, the values of where the g is zero are excluded. The values where g of x is zero are excluded. Anyway, so this is just to let you know why I'm doing this, uh, this uh, intersection or common domain. Uh, and so we're going to see this uh, theorem in details tomorrow with more examples, right? So tomorrow, uh, I will give more details about this theorem. Okay, so, uh, so that will be so tomorrow. So I'm going to discuss this theorem in more details. All right. Okay, guys. I guess um, uh, it's time to stop. Uh, so I'm going to stop here uh, and. Um, and I will, I guess I will see you tomorrow at uh, 10 a.m. All right. So um, uh, I don't know if you have any questions, guys. Uh, I mean, if you have any uh, questions, just uh, let me know. All right. So I'm going to stop here and I will see you tomorrow, guys. Please don't forget your homework, homework number three, which is due uh, tomorrow. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, and I will see you tomorrow. Thank you, everyone. Excuse me, Professor. Yes, yes. Yeah, for, the, for the homework, uh, yes. for the first part, I mean, we need to use the graph paper, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. No problem. OK, well, so I will see you tomorrow, guys. Uh, take care. Okay, so you told me like to wait if I wanna. Yes. To wait at the end, if uh, you got time, you're gonna explain me how to. Oh answer. yeah, for the the blackboard. Yes. Um. So you know, uh, could you send me an email so I can give okay. you like the instructions? Okay. Okay. I'm gonna send you. Yeah. Yeah. You can send me to my. I mean, any email yeah, to so. BTC or Gmail. Uh, okay. As okay. Okay. I will. I will send you the instructions. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care.
Thank you guys. Thank you all.